Hello everyone, it's David from Automotive Press. As you know, I just came back from driving the all new Lexus GX, which is a very impressive vehicle. But this week, I'm also driving the Lexus TX. And even though I already did a full review on the TX, I thought it would be kind of interesting to talk about the two models that are very important to Lexus. They're very different, but they also are in similar price range and also similar size. So how do you decide between a GX and TX? Well, I'm going to help you. So let me highlight 10 key differences between the Lexus GX and the Lexus TX so that you can make a wise decision as to which one is the right vehicle for you. Let's go. Welcome back. So what are some of the key differences between the Lexus GX, which is already a very impressive vehicle, and the new TX, which is also a really fascinating car. Well, the first and the most important difference is that the GX is body on the frame. You can see my 2023 Lexus GX in the back. Obviously, none of us have the 2024 GX here locally, but I do have mine, and that one, of course, is also body on the frame, where the TX is unitized body or monocoque body. And that alone are perhaps one of the most important decisions you have to make because the GX gives you that truck feel, more of the rugged style because of the body on the frame design versus a TX, which is much more of a car-based system or car-based body, and therefore it's going to feel different on the road. A little bit more on that later on. But first, decide for yourself if you prefer more of a truck feel and therefore more of the rugged uh, design and the rugged capability, or you want something that feels closer to a car such as the TX. That's the first one you have to keep in mind. The second point is related to the first one. Because the GX is body on the frame and this is unitized body, that means there's a lot more capability with the GX in terms of off-roading, especially the new 2024 GX, because that one has been designed from the ground up to be a true off-roader and to give you true rugged capability compared to TX, which is maybe okay for a light off-road duty, such as gravel road, but you can't take this into an actual off-road course or to go up and down through some terrains. That's just not possible with a TX. And actually, even the 2023 GX was already very capable because of the shocks, the suspension, the body on the frame design and so forth, but um, you won't believe how capable the 2024 GX is in terms of taking it to some truly difficult terrain and difficult mountain roads. And so that's the second thing you have to keep in mind. Do you think you'll go camping? You might go off-roading uh, and so forth with your vehicle, then stay with the GX. But if you are not gonna do that, or you only do occasional off-roading in a light duty sense, then TX is a better vehicle for you just because it's designed for uh, on-road driving. The third point is also a very important one, and that is the difference in powertrain between the GX and the TX. The GX only have one powertrain right now, which is a 3.4 liter twin turbo V6 engine, which has plenty of power and torque, and it's a really beautiful engine in terms of feel. Almost feels like a small V8 engine in some way, and it has a really good torque at a very low RPM, and therefore it feels really good on the road. The TX is a very different matter. It gives you multiple choices, including this one here, which is the base engine, a 2.4 liter turbocharged four cylinder engine, not a V6, but still has a pretty good power and torque and it feels pretty peppy on the road. Uh, but on other TX models, you can also get 2.4 turbo with a hybrid. And believe it or not, you can also get a plug-in hybrid version of the TX with thankfully a V6 engine. Yes, you can get a naturally aspirated 3.5 liter V6 engine with a plug-in hybrid system on the flagship model of the TX. And those are some of the key differences. So for example, the GX is not yet available with a hybrid. We expect uh, Lexus to offer that sometime next year, but it will be a 2.4 liter turbo hybrid on that one, not the 3.4 V6 with the hybrid. So, uh, in the GX, you can get uh, twin turbo V6 engine right now or wait a little while longer and possibly get the 2.4 turbo hybrid. But on the TX, you can get the 2.4 turbo, the 2.4 turbo with hybrid, and the 3.5 V6 with a plug-in hybrid system, which doesn't have a turbocharged engine. So lots of choices and maybe only you can decide what's the right engine for you. But if you're buying kind of base model and comparing the base model of the GX to TX, I would definitely prefer the 3.4 liter uh, twin turbo V6 of the GX compared to this 2.4, even though this is a well-designed engine and it feels pretty peppy. Uh, on the other hand, if I want the maximum fuel efficiency, then I would want to buy the 
3.5 liter V6 naturally aspirated engine that's combined with a plug-in hybrid system for the top of the line TX. That would be a car to get. It also feels really comfortable. So you have lots of choices and lots of decisions to make between the powertrain choices for the two models. The fourth difference is something that could be very important to you, but it depends on your preference. What is that? Well, it's the manufacturing location. The TX is built in Princeton, Indiana, factory in the USA and that factory is producing Lexus for the very first time in history and therefore this is American built. Whereas a new Lexus GX, like the previous version of the GX, is still built in Japan at the Tahara factory which is perhaps one of the best factories in the world and that's where most of the Lexus models are produced. Now just because one is built in the US and one is built in Japan, it doesn't necessarily mean the Japan built Lexus GX is much better in quality or reliability compared to TX, but there may be some edge just because Tahara factory has been around for so long and that by far is the best factory in the world. Uh, but I still do think the TX is actually very good in terms of overall quality. As I discovered this week during my drive, I didn't hear any squeaks or rattles. And as I will show you now, the body exterior quality is actually quite good as well. So you can see that the uh, gap is 3.9 millimeter here, uh, about same here, maybe four millimeter and then uh, it's 3.8 millimeter there and 3.7 and also about 3.7 millimeter here and you can see the edges line up very well here there's no misalignment and the panel looks really fantastic uh, what is it compared to the gx well when i measured the gx uh, last week in arizona that was a prototype model but it was about 3.5 millimeter all the way through so it is marginally better not substantially better uh, and the panel alignment was also very good on the Tara Belt GX. So in terms of exterior quality, I would say there's not a huge difference with some edge for the new GX, but most important of all, you have to decide whether Japan Belt versus American Belt matters to you. It doesn't matter to me too much just because I have faith in Lexus models period, regardless of where it's built. But for many of you guys who love the Tahara built vehicles, such as the GX and the Forerunner and so forth, you may decide that is a very important point. The fifth point is the availability of the two models. It's going to be a lot harder to get the GX in terms of inventory compared to the TX, just because they're going to build less of this than this. So that's something that might matter to you because even if you wanted to buy the 2024 GX, if you can't actually get one in your hands, then there's no point. Whereas TX is a bit more readily available and in terms of volume, I think they're going to produce more TX in the Princeton, Indiana factory compared to the GX in the Tahara factory. So at least for the next 12 months or so, if you want uh, the widest selection and you want to have a quick access to one of these models, then you might have to pick the TX because you can probably go to a lot and pick one up or order one or allocate one and get it pretty quickly. Whereas for the GX, I think there's already a long waiting list and therefore you might not be able to get one for a year or so. So this all depends on how quickly you want the vehicle. The sixth point is an important one for me, which is to do with the handling and the driving character of the TX and GX. And from that perspective, the TX is definitely a better performer, at least on a regular road. It handles better, it's a bit faster on the corners, it feels a bit more agile, and I do get a bit more feedback from the road. Not much more than the GX, but it is generally speaking a little bit more stable and easier to drive than a GX which feels definitely a more body on the frame feel compared to this one. So if you want to maximize easy driving, comfortable driving, and also a very quiet and refined feel that is best for on-road driving, then the TX definitely has an edge over the GX. On the other hand, because GX was designed to be off-road capable, it has a really comfortable suspension, a very soft, and manageable suspension that is particularly good on a rough road and on a gravel road. So it depends on what you're looking for, but for those of you who are not planning to go off-road, the TX is definitely a better performer than the GX. The seventh point is to do with the pricing and the value. The TX is a little bit cheaper than the GX and they're pricing it in such a fashion that uh, the GX is a next level up compared to the TX, but they do overlap in some cases depending on which model you pick. But generally speaking, the TX is cheaper, so if you want it the most affordable three-row SUV from Lexus that is roomy and comfortable, then you need to pick the TX compared to the GX. On the other hand, I predict 
three, four, five years down the road, that GX will have a better resale value just because there's more demand and less supply on the GX and there seems to be more people interested in the GX than TX. So if you take that into account, perhaps over three, four or five years of ownership, the actual cost of ownership might not be all that difference between the TX and GX, but the initial pricing is cheaper on the TX side. The eighth point is somewhat subjective and it depends on your personal preference but it's to do with the design and I definitely do prefer the Lexus GX design compared to TX. Nothing wrong with the TX, it looks just fine but it is a bit of a sleeper design because it's kind of uh, understated, simple and maybe perhaps even beautiful from some perspective but the GX has that rugged feel, it's got a very unique design and the front end that seems to attract everyone. Everyone just loves the GX so even though it's a bit of a personal thing I think the GX definitely looks better than TX and in terms of side profile and the body design GX also looks better because it has that um, kind of a rugged look to it versus TX which looks more like any other three row SUVs out there. What do you guys think of the design? Which one do you like and which one do you prefer? The ninth point might be an important one for you as well and that is to do with the roominess and the overall capacity for passengers and cargo between the GX and TX. From that perspective the TX is a winner here because he has a truly roomy and comfortable third row but generally speaking all seating area is extremely comfortable and plenty of space for anyone even if you're really tall. Now the GX has improved in terms of uh, roominess and interior spacing compared to 2023 uh, but it is not quite as uh, roomy as a TX just because this is a very big SUV and because it's a unitized body you're not losing space from the body on the frame design that uh, GX suffers from. And also keep in mind that uh, if you were to buy the over trail version of the GX which is the off-road capable version you cannot get the third row you can only get the third row on all the other models of the GX. So if you want to maximize space and you want to carry passengers on the third seat all the time for a long trip, then buy the TX and not the GX. But if you're only an occasional user of the third row seat and you don't need to have a huge amount of space, then GX is actually quite practical as well. Tenth and the final difference between the GX and TX is to do with the technology and the futures. Now in terms of things like safety equipment, in terms of the infotainment system in the interior, the two are actually basically the same. Offers the latest Lexus Safety Sense 3.0, also offers the latest 14-inch uh, displays and so forth. But when it comes to the technology to support off-roading, then the new GX is definitely a winner because it has what we call EKDSS which stands for Electronic Kinetic Dynamic Suspension System. We don't have that on my existing 2023 GX. This one has the passive KDSS, but the new 2024 GX has the EKDSS. And what it does is it automatically engages or disengages the stabilizer bars, both in the front and back, so that you can get maximum articulation of the wheels when you're going through some true off-road areas. These wheels, once it's disconnected from the stabilizer bar, has as much as three inches more of articulation and the wheels can move up and down quite a bit this way, allowing the wheels to stay in contact with the ground or at, or at the very least have more stability when going through off-roading areas. So that's a big difference, whereas obviously we don't get that on the TX. As well on the GX, you get both center and rear locking differentials which once again will allow you to get out of some messy areas when the vehicle is stuck and you just can't seem to get out of it. You just lock one of the differentials or both of them and most likely you can get out of that mud or some slippery surfaces. Whereas on the TX, obviously not designed to go off-roading anyways, so those kind of features are not part of the package. So I hope this list of 10 key differences between the GX and TX are helpful for you to make a decision. There are much more differences than that. There are many other smaller uh, details that I didn't get into, but these 10 things are the primary differences that will help you decide which model to get. For me, I already know which one I would prefer, which is, would be the new GX. Uh, in fact, I even like the existing 2023 GX uh, just because my heart goes to vehicle with the off-road capability and I like the truck feel. But for many of you guys who prefer to drive in city and not go off-roading and you want the most refined feel and the quietest feel and maybe even a slightly better handling, then the TX will make more sense than the new GX.
I'm really curious which one you prefer and which one you might decide to buy. Uh, please let me know in the comments below. But I would appreciate it if you can give me a thumbs up, make some comments. And if you haven't done so yet, would you kindly subscribe as well. Until next video, I'm signing off for now. Thank you so much.